Hello and God bless you. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to receive the word of God right here from the kingdom of light and holiness. It is the voice of the one crying in, in all the earth. Be holy and be the light. We know, we all know and we see it everywhere. Wherever you go, that darkness has taken over. We see that sin is being promoted more than anything. Unrighteous life, way of life, is being promoted more than anything and is supported more than anything throughout the earth. It doesn't matter where you are, where you are situated, where you are located. You know that sin has the first place in society today. So, I'm so happy to see you today as you come here to receive the word of God. Remember, we're always bringing you the good news about the kingdom of God, the good tidings about the kingdom of God, because we believe that the kingdom of God is at hand. He is coming pretty soon, and he's, he's very, very near, more than you and I ever expected. So it's better that we prepare, we get to ready, we be prepared that we are not caught by surprise. As men are these days too much occupied by, by the things of life. They are too much worried about becoming billionaires and becoming millionaires and becomes rich, becomes famous, becomes becoming popular and, and all these kind of things. And yet they forget what the word of God tells us. That seek thee first the kingdom of heaven and, uh, and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto thee. So my friends, thank you very much for tuning in. God bless you. And I do want to take this opportunity to encourage you. Because what is happening today, young people, both young people and old people, they never invest their time in, in receiving the word of God, in, in, in building up themselves. And when it comes to human spirit, they never take time to, to feed the human spirit the right food, the spiritual food. They never take time to train their human spirit. All they do, they train themselves physically and, and maybe mentally. They go to university, they get PhDs, they get masters and, and bachelors. And yet, when it comes to the things of God, everybody's pushing back. So, I want to encourage you that if you are overcoming the devil, because listen to me very well. What the devil is doing these days is to make sure that humans or people see the things of God to be of, of the least value, least value in life. So that is why when you are talking to anyone about the things of Jesus Christ, they look at you as someone who has nothing to do, as someone, someone who has, I don't know, who you look like someone who is crazy to them. They think there are some other things which are pretty important. Some things of high value than the, than the things of God. They are always focusing on their, on their jobs, their position, what they can do in life. So they forget about the most important thing in life. It is the word of God. And that is why the Bible tells us, the Holy Scripture tells us, that we must allow, we must allow the words of Christ, of Christ to, to, to richly dwell in us more than anything, and more than our worldly education, more, more about, more than uh, the, the news we are, we are, we are watching and are listening to all oh, the war between, between uh, Hamas and the, the Israeli army, all these kind of things. Oh, terrorist group somewhere. All other news about him. Dangerous diseases. All these kind of things. We must allow the word of the word of Christ to richly dwell in us. And if we do so, then when all these bad news are coming 
to us or we come across any bad news we are already fully equipped and prepared and we know who we are and who is, who we have and who is inside us but the moment you do not have Jesus Christ and then you, you come across this bad news get what happens you start freaking out and you you become traumatized you become crazy you become too worried about life and your future and your destiny all these kind of things so that is what the devil does he makes sure that it's so hard for you to come and listen to the word of god maybe it's a preaching for one hour maybe one hour and a half you if you listen for for a long time it doesn't take you five minutes but when it comes to the world of things you can listen and watch we are talking about hours and hours or oh, days and days weeks and weeks months and months Years and years, you see some people when it comes to what they think. Did you watch that movie? Or did you watch that? Or did you see that? Did you see this? Those? And list goes on and on and on. But when it comes to the word of God, you know what I'm saying is true. Maybe you are one of those guys who never spend time with God. So this is the time. It's the time we need to push back to Push back and tell the devil, hey, enough is enough. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of you using me as your own vessel for destruction. Because it doesn't matter how much the money the devil has given you or how much worth the devil has given you. It is therefore to destroy you at the end of the day. Because what the devil does the best is to prevent you to enter the kingdom of the true and the living God. Almighty, the omniscient, the omnipresent, the God who knows no beginning, everything else we see will pass away and the end of the age is coming pretty soon. No one ever knows the day. No one ever knows the hour. So what do we do, you and I? We must invest our time into the kingdom of God. Into the kingdom of God. We never Take these things for granted. As we see, many of you, many of the people these days, they take the things, I would say maybe 90% of the people on planet Earth, they take the things of God for granted. They, they consider them to be not so important in their lives. And that's why you are always focusing on, on other things except the things of God. And the, the church, what has been even destroying you for the, for the past many years, it is because they only tell you that you should always go to God. One day, one particular day, maybe it's a Sunday, maybe it's a Sabbath day, whatever. And that is so wrong. Because you check, six days, Five days you are spending those days with the devil, the devil. Nothing. You can't even hear the voice of God. You do not even pray five minutes of your life, of your daily life. In, during those five days or six days, the only day you go, it's a Sunday. And when you go there, they preach. It. Maybe the service takes less than Two hours and a half. You tell me, how are you going to grow? Even in a in a in a in a in a realm of the physicality, there's no way you can grow up if you eat once, or or you eat the same food, and but you eat only maybe once in a week. There's no way you're going to grow up, my friends. But for the things of God, we say it is okay. It is okay. Our God is, is we are saved by grace. It's grace. Granted. It's just for granted. Take it for cheap and easy. As useless as it is. But that's why, how the devil deceives you. The devil deceives you in these ways. All you need, all you are thinking, 
is about money, 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 and they're becoming rich, and they're receiving miracles, and yet you do not want to, you don't want to get rid of your, your sins, your evil ways. Do you know how much evil is taking place in this life? In every area of our lives, I'm talking about every aspect of our lives. You see, there is sin of sins of all kinds, kinds, and what even what the devil has even done bad or the best, what the devil has has really succeed, succeed, succeeded to achieve is to destroy the family bond. Now we don't know, we don't see the bond. Family bonds is, never exist anymore. Everybody's hunting and chasing money, running up and down, up and down. You are not contented. You are not happy with what you have in life. You think, I need more and more. And now you, you even want to go to Jesus and tell him, I need more money. I need a promotion. I need this. I need that. I want to become. And that is why you, when you go to God, that is what you want to tell him to do for you. So you don't want him to tell you anything. So you don't want to keep his commands. When he says, he tells you, love the Lord your God with all your, your heart, with all your, your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. You tell him, God, you are the one who's supposed to love me that way. Not I, not me. No, I can't do that. I'm too big. I have a PhD. But Jesus Christ, you didn't even get a certificate. Why do you think? Why, why do I care? And it's the same thing that the devil has introduced in, in, into religious institutions. When for you to, to get a permission to, to qualify to be someone who preaches the word of God, you have to go to them. They have to teach you how to preach what to say, how to say it, and then they're going to give you this thing. It's a qualification. Maybe it's a certificate. It's a, it's a diploma. It's a, it's a degree. We're talking about bachelor. We're talking about uh, master's. We're talking about PhD. And when you get to PhD, you, you, you act like you are the holy of the holiest. I don't know what is wrong with humanity. Because you think, once you, you graduate, <coughs> once you have your PhD, that is when they think you are, you have attained the level, the highest level of righteousness. It is wrong, it's demonic and satanic as hell is. You look like someone who lives in hell. You are someone who looks, who, the way I see you is like someone who is, from hell, because when you see these religious institutions, what they do, all they do is just to empty your pockets. They do not care about your spiritual life. They do not care about preparing you for his soon coming, because he said, go, preach, and tell people, repent, and get rid of your sins. Homosexuality, fornication, sexual immorality, Manipulations and the control, lying, deceptions, idolatry, or conspiracy. My friends, the list can go on and on and on. They do not care about these things. So this guy, when he has a PhD in, in theology, Bible studies, now they place them on top. And this guy does not even know how to pray, does not know how to communicate with God. All they know is men taught me ways how to pray. Maybe how you can home, how you can become successful by giving. That's what the principle now they come. Principle of giving, sowing and reaping. Go reap yourselves. 
Shame on you, this type of preachers who are thieves. We call them thieves. You will never ever see anywhere where Jesus was forcing people and always preaching about giving or supporting my ministry or doing another share of this. Where have you seen in the Bible where Jesus was crying and telling everybody to give, to give, to give? He would tell every human being, repent, be holy, be righteous, live holy life, be the light, shine, shine, shine. Yes, be holy. Never go and go there and tell them, give, 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 give. That is how God blesses you. It's a lie. Demonic preachings. They are everywhere. They are everywhere on social media. My friends, I tell you, this is the most dangerous time of our lives. Too many of antichrists, they are everywhere. Those false prophets, false preachers of all kinds, and priests, pastors of salaries, bishops who manage their own institution. Your church is an institution, if you didn't know that. God has nothing to do with your church. Listen to me pretty well. Because when you are talking about church, my friends, church, the church has nothing to do with those buildings where one guy locks the, the doors and opens the doors on a specific day to get your money. God has nothing to do with those things. Let me tell you this one pretty well. And you must understand it. Because many of you have become so religious. More than especially those of you who classify yourselves as Christians. You have become so religious. So dangerous. More than anything I have ever seen in this life. More than any other thing. And more than any other people. It is better to come across someone who is not religious, who say, I do not believe in these things of God. Those people, you can approach them and preach to them and tell them about Jesus Christ. But for you who, are, who call yourselves Christians, you are dangerous more than any other people on the planet Earth. Because how? Why am I saying this one? Because you have deceived yourselves and you have been deceived and brainwashed by those guys who, who, who tell you each and every day. Those guys who tell you that you are Christians because you have come into this building, this, this man-made church. That's how they deceive you. So, Jesus does not know about your church. If you go and read the Bible, you will see that the disciples and the, the Christians of those times, or those days, they would gather in different places. That is why they even shared everything in common together. No one said, this is my private journey. No one ever said, God has told me I should buy Another private jet, demonic, satanic as hell is. This guy is from hell. It's coming to make your life miserable. Miserable, miserable. Miserable, my friends. Listen to me. A servant of God can be taken care of by the people of God without even saying a word about your giving. That is how simple it is. Because you are going to look and see and say, yes, this is someone who serves God. Yes, this guy is making our society better by preaching about Jesus Christ. But these days, these guys, they are making the things of God to be, to be the only mean to make it their living or to acquire riches and wealth and when you are becoming poor, so poor. So that is why I'm telling you, I am telling you, God has nothing to do with your church. I do not care how big your church is, your congregation, congregation, how, how big it is. 
or your temple, your synagogue, your mosque. Oh, you say, our, our Christianity is the, the largest community throughout the earth. I don't care. They are goats. They are goats, all of them. Most of them are goats. They are not sheep. They are not sheep. They are goats. And Jesus, when he comes, is going to tell you, go on my left side, not on my right side. So, my friends, uh, the word of God is coming to you right away from the kingdom of light and holiness. The voice of the one crying throughout the earth. And in all the earth, be holy and be the light. I have the, the word of God, my friend. I want to share with you the Holy Spirit that is me today. And the message I have for you. It says light and the darkness can never coexist. They can never exist in one place. They can never live together. Light and the darkness. Never. So we are talking about light and the darkness. What is light? What is darkness, my friends? So, to understand what is light and what is darkness, you do not have to go to theology. You do not, you don't have to go to somebody with a PhD, with a master's in theology to explain to you what is light and darkness. In a very simple word, light, when you are talking about the things of God, you are light. When you do the will of God, when you are, whatever you do, your deeds, whatever you say, it is for the glory of Jesus Christ. Very simple definition. Nothing. Anything you do, and Jesus Christ cannot take the glory. Anything that, anything that you do, which does not line up with the will of God, that means it's, it is darkness. So, you may do something that is so accept, acceptable and so embraced by society. I tell you, it does not necessarily mean that that is light. Yeah, you may say, oh, the good Samaritan thing, <laughs> which everybody sings all the time. Oh, the good Samaritan, whatever. Oh, do good to others. Oh, this and this. You may do good to others. But here's the thing. You must have Jesus first. And the foremost, before we talk about anything, about a good person doing good, because salvation does not come by your deeds. Because of what you, you do, or what you have done in the past. You saw someone who was hungry, someone who did not have food, someone who was in trouble. Or you, 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 you did help them, and you did it. Do all this kind of good and, and, and good deeds and the things to them. But if you do not want to get rid of your sins, if you do not want to repent, and they belong to the kingdom of light. That is why this message always comes to you right away from the kingdom of light and holiness. Where Jesus Christ, it is, he is. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords, my friends. Because while there is holiness, you know, the devil can never have this status. This is status of holiness and righteousness and the light. It is only applicable. It belongs to Jesus Christ our Lord and the Savior. Because he and him alone is the light of the world. That is what it is, my friends. So, we are talking about light and the darkness. Darkness. Light and the darkness. So how would I know and determine if I, I, I am in light or in darkness? 
the kind or the type of life you live on planet earth how would you judge remember i told you you don't need someone to come and tell you this big explanation they start to go it's like history going back or oh, like means oh la, la, la. our friends another way to know how it looks like to be in darkness and to be in light go in your house when it's night time shut down all the lights that is how you are going to see what darkness means so darkness means you are too much into the world system you are caught up with the cares of this life and you have given the things of this life the first place and jesus christ come last and many of you these days because you are church goers who goes to who go to church once in a week i tell you 100% you have prioritized the things of this life more than your savior your creator the lord god almighty you have given god the last place in your life make no mistake do not be deceived don't go with the philosophy don't be uh, deceived by the philosophy just remain jesus Christ, my friends because this guys will prove to you how being a regular tither and a, <laughs> a giver who gives regularly constantly who gives offering at on every sunday they will prove to you how you are so holy and anointed they will convince you how you are working with god just by going to church on one day and praying on that day and there many of you you do not you don't even know how to pray i won't be surprised because that's how they teach you you think only one guy should be able to pray for you if you do not get the prayer from them then it's not a prayer it has to be your your pastor your prophet your apostle your bishop you think those are the guy who can only pray so these guys they will prove to you how you you are giving because you are a regular tither who tithes on a regular basis every sunday you know you make sure you you are 10% is there you are, you are your other offerings are there they will show you and they tell you and they convince you how you are so holy and so acceptable in god's eye by those i men's ideas brain because what remember they are there to make a living they are there to make money they are there to acquire riches that is why i tell you make no mistake do not deceive yourselves my friends this is a time we must know what means to be in jesus christ what means no god what means to belong to god it's not what men says it is what the word of god tells you do you ever read the bible on your own or oh, they have been they have corrupted they have confused you they tell you the things of the, the holy the, the holy scripture it's not is to understand you must go to theology otherwise there's no way you can understand the bible it's a lie it's a demonic and a satanic as hell is all you need the best teacher you ever need you and i the best teacher we ever needed in this life to understand god's purpose over your life god's plan over your life to and to fully comprehend the the scripture to fully understand the things of god the best teacher you ever needed it's not theology it's not even i though i am preaching i am also nothing you need the holy spirit that is why jesus said we all need the holy spirit without the holy spirit you are going to be carried away you are going to be easily misled 
by the preachings of these days. So demonic. So demonic. You see the pastors. They are there just for money. For the sake. And you know for sure. You, you go look at them. They are like any other person in the world system. When they come. They will focus on giving. They will tell you all the, the scriptures. How they interpret those scriptures. About giving. That is what they are going to do. My friends, remember our message. The message you have today says light and the darkness can never coexist. So there's no way light and the darkness can be in one place at the same time, in one house. So, Remember, I told you about church. Many of you always deceive yourselves by thinking to be a true Christian and a genuine human. You must go in those buildings, many men. While you are a guy, always, you consider them as the anointed ones. They are there. So acting so holy because they want to Put fear in you so that you can give and give and give and give. Many of you deceive yourselves by thinking when you go there, that is what makes you a true and a genuine Christian. That is a lie. It's a deception. Your life is a Christian. It's a, it's a daily life that you live each and every day. It is a life that you live on a daily basis. Your work, your talk, your appearance, make no mistake, the stupid and the foolishness of this generation you see. They say, God does not care about our outward looking. Our outside does, doesn't matter. God does not care about It's a lie. Deception of the devil, 100%. 100%. The devil is deceiving and tormenting you. When you are talking about holy light, you know there is a difference between light and darkness. If there is light, you see and you know where you are going. You see everything around you. But when there is darkness, we are talking about complete darkness. What happens? You do not see where you are going and you do not even know. What is around you? So that is how it is. Today, many Christians, these days, these days, these days, Christians are so fake. They are, they are in darkness and yet they convince themselves. Oh, I know Jesus Christ. I love Jesus Christ. Oh, they say it's love, love Jesus Christ. But they don't, how do I know that they the, most Christians these days are in darkness. It is because only their beaks swings, their mouth, they swing a lot. I love Jesus Christ. I know Jesus Christ. Oh, I know this scripture. And they know a lot about the Bible, the, the Holy Scripture. Some of the some of you maybe you even know the Bible than I do. Because you went to theology, they taught you, memorized. Right in the head, but not here. That's a difference. So in the head, you may know this one more than I do. But when it comes to here, in my heart and my soul, I know I can tell you that you are be, you are faking around. You are faking around. That's the difference. By someone who has, who has a Bible in their head, it's like the Pharisees and those religious leaders. That's how they are. That is how they are. They are. So, you are so fake because what you do, only honoring God with your, your lips and the lipsticks on here. And that is what you do. That is all you do. Honoring God with your lips, but your hearts are far away, far away from Him. That's what you do. You're so fake. 
Why? It is because you don't want to learn about what he say. And you do not want to hear what Jesus says. But you want to tell him what you want. When you go to, to him, you want to tell him all your trouble, your, your whatever, your needs and your desires, whatever your flesh is telling you that you need in this life. At this moment, is exactly what you want to tell. Go and tell Jesus. But what he tells you, you don't want to listen. That's a very, very dangerous move in life. And, and the guys there, they have, to, they have been preaching and telling you that being in Jesus Christ means you have to be successful. You must, be, you must own all the big, the big mansions. The big mansion, oh, like Jarius cars. You're talking about self-driving cars so you can sit down and, and they laugh and they joke and they do all st stupidity and the garbage things. That's why they tell you. Why? It is, it is because they themselves are stealing from you. They take everything you have ever have in your life. They, they even tell you, go sell your house. A homeless just steps in their church. What they do, they start telling them, give, give you two who have been stealing from God. Someone who has no roof on their head, they still tell them, give, it's because you're not giving. That's why God is not blessing you. Jesus Christ has become our sacrifice. So I tell you to my friends, there's nothing whatsoever in this life. You can do, you and I, or you can give to make God, to please God. And to make him happy. To say, oh yeah, yes. More, more, more than or beside doing his will. So what do you and I need to do in this life? It's God's will. That's how we please him. That is why when he, he said, when Jesus was baptized, he said, behold, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. So the same things, if you want God to, to say the same thing to you. You must be ready to do the will of God, not the will of man. Not what men instruct you to do, but what God tells you to do in this life. Condemning sin, rebuking sin, or tell all of, we, all of humanity to come to Jesus Christ. Get rid of sins. You see the world we have today. Or maybe here, right here in Canada, or maybe in, in the United States of America, can be in Europe, Africa, everywhere. My friends, you know the sins we see. They are so horrible and terrific. Sometimes you look at humans, you compare them with other animals, and you say, who is barren? You can't even, it's hard even to say. Because what humans are doing these days, it's so evil, more than animals there. But what the government does, or your government, they are supporting your evil. When they tell you, a man can become a woman. I don't know how this is possible, how this be becomes so possible. But some men, they become women. And they find husbands. And they were husbands, but now they, become, they are going to become wives to other men. So evil. My friends, let's read the word of God right here. Well, remember, we are talking about darkness and the light. They never coexist. So many of you, these days, you are deceiving yourself. Yes, I know Jesus Christ. Oh, I love Jesus Christ. Oh, scripture. You know scripture after scripture. And some of you use the whole scripture to defend and protect your evil. Because what all you have, it's men taught ideas and rules. That's what you have in your head. That is what you have in your mind. How you can manipulate others and corrupt their minds and brainwash them and confuse them. Now they become slave to you in God, in Jesus Christ. Remember, if you want to find freedom, there's no any other better place where you can find freedom more than in Jesus Christ. Because the word says, whom the son sets free, he or she is free indeed. In this life, as long as you stay away from Jesus Christ, you will never, you will never ever 
be free whatsoever. No matter how much you try in this life, I tell you this. You are going to be a slave and you are going to live in bondage for years and years. Remember, the Israelites, until the moment they said, God said, now I need to take them back. That is when they became free. But the moment, if they stayed there in Egypt, there's no way they could have been free at all. They would, they would remain slave for, I don't know, as, as long as it would take them to be there, being there. So it's the same as you. Because you still corrupt your mind and deceive yourselves. You, are, you walk in darkness. You know, you cheat on your wife. You cheat on your husband. Oh, you never take care of your, your family. You as a man, you do not take the responsibility as the father and the husband. You as a woman, you never take responsibility as a woman. Oh, you cares about your job. Oh, now you tell your husband, don't, don't tell me this. I tell you, if there is anything that the devil has succeeded to destroy is family. These days, it is a mess. That is why these days we don't see marriage. It's just co cohabiting together. Yes, cohabiting. Living together, not married. They say there is no... We don't want to make this permanent. It's temporary. Temporary. Here and, here and there. If I feel like it, we want to do it. Let's do it. That's what is here. This generation. My friends, let's go read the word of God. Let's read the word of God. Because we want to see light and the darkness. None of you, you are just in darkness. And at the same time, you attend churches. You go there. Church goers. But who are in darkness. Because the light that you think is inside you, it is darkness. To God, it's darkness. But to you, it is light. So, it's time. Today, you examine your life. Assess where do you stand. Where do you stand today, my friends? Many of you are fornicating. You go there. You haven't married yet. Oh, kiss, it's okay. Lips kissing like this. Say, it's, it's love, it's love. That is it. Last, shame lasts. That is what it is. Because the moment you start touching, touching, what do you end up doing? What is it? And the devil has made these things so normal to the point that you have normalized these things. And you do them without fear, the fear of God. My friends, let's read the, the word of God and the see. Now, because we are, remember, our message is about Light and darkness. Remember, the message is coming to you right away from the kingdom of, of light and holiness. So, we are reading in the first John. First John. We are reading in the first John, my friends. We start from verse 5 to 10. It says, it tells you to walk in light. Not you who are walking in darkness. And at the same time, deceiving yourself. Oh, I am walking in light. I know who I am. I know where I am going. I, and I used to, you know, these songs of these days are so dangerous. I know who I am. La, la, all these kind of things. You know who I, you are. But you are still fornicating. You still lie. You still talk rubbish and the garbage coming out of your mouth. You gossip too much. And they say, you know who you are. You are the devil's sons and the daughters, not the not the, the sons and the daughters of God. Because if you were, you should walk in light. Let's read. I'm going to read the Holy Scripture in Jesus' name. It says, This is the message we have heard from him. So they heard this from Jesus Christ. And they declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live. And do not live by truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the, li he is in the light, we have fellowship 
fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sins. Eight says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our, us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a, li a liar and his words has no, has no place in our lives. So this is what it is. So, if you and I, if you and I, if you and I, we know and we believe that we have Jesus Christ. Tells us God is light. In him there's no darkness. So if you and I, my beloved, my beloved in Jesus Christ, if you believe and you know, you know that you have received Jesus Christ, you have made him your Lord, to be your Lord and your Savior, you must know this. He is the light. God is light. In him there is no darkness. What we see these days, it is a confused world full of believers who are also confused, who are so divided. Those who cover sins of all kinds. Those who are so ignorant. Those who are, who are unsettled. Those who are disorganized. Those who are unable to listen to Jesus Christ. Those who have no knowledge of God. All you know, it is your religion. Your church and your guy. Because you obey more what your guy says. You obey what your guy says more than the word of God. So it tells us, God is light. Says, if you say you know Jesus Christ, if you say you know God, and yet you walk in darkness, what, what, how do I know I walk in darkness? But well, first I say, simple and easy. Whatever you do, and you believe Jesus Christ would not do it. It can be also how you, you, your appearance, the way you appear to people. There might be the way you dress. Some of you, you pierce your nose, your tongues, your lips, your ears. What if it's like the donkeys, the donkeys, the donks that are being pulled, they're pulling the luggages, the donkeys, donkeys, you like donkeys. Piercing your nose, your eyes, everywhere, tongues, and oh, it's like this is our traditions. Our ancestors used to do these things. So we inherited. This is uh, the, the inheritance from, uh, from our, our el elders, elders, our grand, 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 grand parents. So demonic, my friends. When we come to God, we live, we must put traditions away. We come. He changes us. He turns us into something that he himself wants to say. And that is why the word of God tells us he makes us new, new creations. Not old creations. You come with those garbage rubbish. You have tattoos all over your body. Oh, you have rasta all from head to toes. You say, this is okay. God does not no, we want the, the appearance and the looking of God. What do we see? We see the Jesus Christ. How it is. And the people can see and tell, oh, this man is heavenly person. This woman is a heavenly person. Someone of heaven, not the earthly guy. Call up in the line. Why do we bother about these things? Why do we cling on these things too much? It is because the devil 
Some of you, you want to look like those in the world system because there's no difference between you and them. So it tells us, He is light. God is light. Jesus Christ says, Whoever say I know him and let you walk in darkness. Darkness says my friends. Says you are a liar. So in other words, you are certain. You are the devil because the devil is a lie. The liar. The fathers of all the lies. It is the devil. So you are the devil. This is what the, the, the word of God tells us. This is what the word of God tells us. You are a liar, my friends. And the truth is not in you. That is what the word of God tells us. So, what do you think about your walk, your life with Jesus Christ? What do you see and how do you, how do you, See yourself, where do you stand? God says, <laughs> if we come to our fellowship, fellowship with God, fellowship with Jesus Christ, and yet walk in darkness, that's what the word of God says. We lie. And we live not by truth. There's no truth at all. The moment you say, and guess what? I tell you today that even those guys who preach, they preach lie. How do I tell? It is because they are preaching man's ideas, man's wisdom for, by creating their own followers, their own disciples, they make you to be their own. They are making they are making sure that you belong to them, not to Christ Jesus. Remember, our, our responsibility or what we have need to do in life as people who preach the word of God is to bring many or millions to Christ Jesus Christ. Making you the disciples of Jesus Christ, not our own. But those guys, they have huge and big churches. And you, pile, you are piling up in there like this. It is, it is full to the, to the overflow. Means some guys are listening to the preaching from outside. It is because you are so religious. You do not know. You do not know God. And you and you are not able to listen to Jesus Christ. Because only one day that guy says, come and come with your tithes and offerings. That's what the guy says, right? And you believe in those guys more than you believe in Jesus Christ himself. It's like, it, it's like that those guys died for you. It looks like those guys died for you. And it looks like those guys have heaven for you. I wonder. I wonder if we come today. Where would you be? In which environment is he going to find you in? Light or darkness? Your environment? Your life? Do you walk in light or in darkness? Here it says says if we say we have fellowship with him and at the same time walk in light in the light walk in light says here we have fellowship with one another. And it says, says, the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sins. So, only the blood of Jesus can wash away your sins. Your sins, not your guys who 
sprinkling the take water, sprinkle water on you, sprinkle water on you. That just drops of water on you. I'm anointing you, cleansing you, all your sins. That's what they do. That is not how you get rid of your sins. Church, we must walk in the light, have fellowship with him, and then fellowship with one another, my friends. And then, because remember, we are walking in light. There's no sin here. Because he who walk in the light, you don't, you are not sinning like any other humans. Because you know, in him there is no unrighteousness. Says, anyone who claims that they have no sin, the word of God tells us, you deceive yourselves. And the, tr the truth is not in you. So, many people, when it comes to verse 9, says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So it says, if we confess, but some people will say, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Don't ever forget this one. When it says, you must confess your sins. So many of you, because these days you walk in darkness and you deceive yourselves that you walk in light. Today is the time you must confess of all your sins, what you have been doing behind there. Maybe behind the closed door. Or maybe when you go behind or at the back of someone you love. You are doing some miserable things all this time. You say, he, he or she does not see me, so I am free to do, free to do anything and whatever you like. But the one who sees you says you must confess your sins. It doesn't matter because you go to church. It does not mean that you are going to heaven. Going to church, giving a lot of money, Doing good and all these kind of things. Or helping somebody. Or maybe he's a preacher. Or maybe, I don't know. Those are not the things that will take you to heaven. You must confess your sins. You must repent of your sins. Get rid of your sins today. That's what says. That is what is the word of God tells us. Yes, if we confess, he is. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. And just, and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have no, we have not sinned, we make him a liar, to be a liar. And his word has no place in our lives. That's what it is. All of you, oh, I didn't sin because no one saw you. You want proof until they prove to you that you did commit sin. That is how many of you, they are, how you are hiding sin. You are sitting on sins. You are like, no one saw me, so I will just go to church. And I don't have time to repent. No one saw me, so why, why would I go there? If they, th they think I did commit sin, they prove. Okay, prove it to me. Why did you see me doing it? Why did you see me? He saw you. And that's why he says, if you say you did not commit those sins, so you are making him a liar. And his word has no place in your life. That's what he says. You are a liar. You are Satan. You are the devil. Because you know, someone, there's only one guy who did not want, who did not want to repent and ask for, ask for forgiveness. Acknowledge. He and until this day, he doesn't want to acknowledge and confess that what he did was so wrong. And that the devil, that is why he has become your father. Not God, no more God. The devil, Satan, has become your, your father, the father of all lies. The devil, he, he said, no, 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 I did not. 
It was my right to do whatever. Yes, I had the right to do whatever I was doing. And it is the same thing. What? When it comes to you also, you say, it is my right. Yes, I have all the right to do whatever, to become whatever I want. No one should ever tell me. And no one should ever, Jesus should never control my life. Jesus should never tell me what to do and how to go about this life, how to walk this in this life, how to behave in this life. Jesus should never tell me this one. And guess what? Now the devil has brought, what the devil has done, he has brought your priests and your pastors who never teach you the word of God. They teach, your, they, they just preach to you exactly what you want to to be and want to, what you want to hear. That is why they say, become a gay, become a lesbian, become, become such and such, all this and this. They never condemn your sins. But I tell you, God says, God says, this is what the word of God tells you. And it tells all of us that if we say we keep holding on those sins and say, hey, I did not commit sin. I did, I'm not a sinner. Says you are a liar. Maybe you are the guy who preach. Oh, you are preaching. It's money, 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 giving, giving. You know that also. It's a sin. A sin. That's not what we are supposed to be preaching. We want people to get rid of their sins. We want to see a society that is so peaceful. Where there is peace. Where people live holy life. We find family values. We find Jesus Christ being glorified in every aspect of our lives. Every move you make, that Jesus Christ be glorified. But people, people these days, they say, you are being too religious, too much, too much. You, they say, you can't just include and put Jesus into everything. That's what they have been preaching to you. That is what they say. Holy life, my friends, is not a shortcut. Living a holy life, walking in light. You can say, okay, now because I'm walking in light, I want to switch off the light for a moment, and then I'm going to turn on the light. That is the type of Christians we see these days. And that is exactly that your preachers, your pastors, your bishops, that is what they have been preaching to you. They say, hey, we know God is light. Being in Jesus Christ means walking in light. But guess what? There is some situation, some instances where you need to switch the light off and then you can walk in the darkness and then you're going to come back and turn on the light. So demonic, so satanic as hell. Because you may do that the moment you turn or you switch off the light. And that will be the end of your life. Yes, your life is gone there. Where do you go? You think your guy is going to come and rescue you? You are done at that time. So that is why I do encourage you to always examine your life and assess your walk with the Jesus Christ. Are you walking in the light or are you walking in darkness? How are you walking in this life? In darkness or in light? You are walk with the Jesus Christ. Because many of you are doing too much of evil. evil. You are kids. You just have let them go the way you raised them up or the way you brought them up. You brought them up. You just let them be whatever they wanted. No discipline whatsoever. No wonder when they grow up, now they look like monsters. They are the ones who are shooting people on the street because you are failure. You are failure to train them in a godly way. Godly way, God's manner. You just thought, okay, I, oh, now your government, your governments tell us, tell you, don't do anything, don't force them, don't no, no, no. Oh, you so you make them soft like jellyfish. They grow up like jellyfish. So soft, even if you say a word, the kid start crying. You wonder what kind of generation is this? A word. Kids start crying, bringing them like jellyfish. That's what it is. And no wonder when they grow up, they end up on the street 
coming. Drug addict. They're addicted into sexual immorality. They are selling themselves prostitutions. And yet you go say, you tell people, yes, I know God. I love Jesus Christ. Make your own home a church because you know, many of you do not know what the church means. A church is not a building. Though the house of God but these days, I do not even dare to call them house of God. Maybe it's a God with a small letter G, not capital G. Because these days, why we sit there? It is like a marketplace. Den of thieves. Because how, how dare they lock those churches seven days or six days? On a Sunday, they open. Or on the Sabbath, they open. Why? Is that, is, that, is that the house of God where people should be going to pray? No. So, make your own home to be a church. Make the presence of God or be found in your very own church. Your own home is a church because you, you are the one who is a church. When Jesus come, says he's coming for his own church. So the church is you and I. We are the church. We are the temple of the living God because we have the Holy Spirit. My friends, I hope from now on, you know for sure, you there's no way you're going to keep walking the way you walk. Talk the, the talk you, you are used to. Say, yeah, yeah, sometimes you need the fun and the jokes or kind of stupidity. My friends, you are into sexual immorality. You are gossiping, false teachings. You are covering Sins of all kinds. Idolatry. You are fornicating. And you are into pleasures of all kinds. And you are always chasing riches and the wealth. Giving them the first place in your life. That is not walking in light. You must walk in light. Giving God the first place in your life. Not because you go to church. It is because it's a life that you live. It's a life that glorifies Jesus Christ on a daily basis. Each and every day. Not just on a Sunday. That is why I tell you. Those of you who just think because you sing in a church on a Sunday. Or because you tithe. And you give offerings and all these kind of things. You do good towards other people. My friends, that is not how walking in light means. You must be in him. You must do what glorifies him. Not man or what glorifies you yourself. Because many of you do things to take all the glory to yourselves that people may see and they look and they say, oh, this guy is so nice. He's a good guy. That's what you want to hear from people. Oh, he's a nice preacher, the greatest preacher. But what he's preaching, principle of giving, he's gonna show you how to sow in the rip and all these kind of things, how it works, how it has how, is, how it has worked for him or her in their lives. That is not why we preach, my friends. It's time we need to come to Jesus Christ. We need to walk in light each and every day. There's no way you can be in light. If you do not have Jesus Christ. So I encourage you today my friends. I do want to see you growing. I, I really encourage you. To hunger and thirst. To become like him. To never be a liar. Never make him a liar. Because that is the worst thing you want to do in life. And I, I want you to be assured. That going to church. Attending and entering those Many made buildings. There is no guarantee of seeing the kingdom of God. The, the only way you can be guaranteed to see the kingdom of God and to enter the kingdom of God it is by living life that glorifies God, by doing the will of God and walking in, in the light, not in darkness. Your deeds, you know yourself, my friends. Anything that does not glorify Jesus Christ, your deed, your say, your work and talk, my friends. 
that is not taking me to heaven. My friends, God bless you for tuning in and receiving the word of God. And always remember to share with your friends, family, and everybody so that they can, they can know the truth and be ready to receive him when he comes. It's not what men say. It is what God says. That is what we need to, to hide inside in us. Within us, more than anything in this life, the word of God should be in us, within us, inside you, more than anything in this life. My friends and my beloved in Jesus Christ, I will see you next time, right here, from the kingdom of light and holiness. God bless you, and I wish you again, in Jesus' mighty name, amen.